In this video, we're going to have a look at the different types of joins that you can use in SQL Server. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. On screen, we've got something that looks fairly complicated, but don't worry about it. What we've got is two tables that we've used before sys.objects. So this gives you a list of all of the objects. And the important thing to remember here is that there is an object ID number and there is a name attached to it. So this is a particular object, this is another different one. And then we've got this, which gives you all of the columns. So object ID number three has got about 13 columns and object ID five has got some 17, 18 columns and so on. So what I'm doing in here is having a different set. So here I have got one query where the object IDs range from three to 19. And in this one, it ranges from 10 to 29. So you can see there isn't 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, or 15. And in fact, there isn't a 26 either. If you're running this on your computer, the results might vary. Now, the question is, if I join these two sets together, what is the answer? Am I going to get numbers between three and 19 and then 10 and 29? Or am I going to get numbers between three and 29 or between 10 and 19 or what? And the answer is, I'm going to get numbers between 10 and 19. It's because of this type of join. Now, to have a bit of an easier look at it, let's have a look at these two tables just looking at the object ID field. So here we have our two tables or queries. And we've got sys objects, which has object IDs of 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 16, 17, 18, and 19. We've also got sys.columns, which has IDs of 16 through 29. Now, the ones which are similar, 16, 17, 18, 19 are placed in the middle of this Venn diagram. So we have got various different types of joins. And if you know the joins, why not predict what numbers are going to come up each time? So the first join is just the word join, also known as inner join. So if you know what joins are, what's going to come up? An inner join is going to take only those things which are in both queries or tables. So in this particular instance, it's going to take 16, 17, 18, and 19. It's not going to report on the others. A left join, also known as a left outer join, takes everything from the first table, sys.objects, and it takes everything from the second table where they are the same. So it's going to take the entirety of this table or query, plus where they are the same in the second table or query, it's also going to take them. So in other words, you're going to see all of the object names from three to 19, and you're going to see all of the columns 16 to 19. So with the inner join, all you are going to see were the objects and columns 16 to 19. Here you will see three through 19. A right join or right outer join takes the second of the inputs and says you're gonna see all of them plus anything from the first input, which is the same. So in this case, we're going to see all of the columns from 16 to 29, plus all of the objects from 16 to 19. We're not going to see three to nine. Now, if you want to see both of them, you can use a full join, also known as a full outer join. So that is going to get all of it. So all of the sys objects from three to 19, and all of the sys columns from 16 to 29. It's not going to repeat though. You're not going to see numbers three through 19 and then 16 to 29. It's only going to show them once as applicable. The last join is not often used. And if you are just starting out with joins, don't use it. It's called a cross join. And what a cross join does is it separates these two queries, tables, inputs and then says, okay, I have this first item number three and I'm going to match it against every single one of these. So we've got 13 different sys.columns and it's going to give me 13 answers compared to number three. And then five, it's going to compare five against each of these. So it's not going to say whether they're equal or whether they're dissimilar, it's just going to take the lot. So these are the different joins. So let's have a look at them 
in action. So here we got our join, also known as our inner join. So if I run this, you'll see that this is only where they are the same. So where it is between 10 and 19. So in this case, between 16, 17, 18, 19, because there is no 10, 11, 12, etc. So here you can see we have got things from the object table and things from the column table as well. If I were to change this to a left join or a left outer join, you don't need the word outer. In fact, very frequently you won't see it be used. You just see left join. Then we have everything from the object ID table between 3 and 19. So for numbers 3 to 9, where we're not seeing anything from this second input, because this is just from 10 to 29, we have null. So null, in this case, shows a lack of matching. But we have everything from this first table. Then when they do in fact match 16 to 19, we have everything. So a left join gives me everything that a join gave me, 16 to 19, plus everything that was in the first table, query, input, but not in the second. So that's these. So right join does the reverse. So a right join takes everything from the second input plus everything from the first input which matches. So you can see, if I just run this now, we start off at 16, so from 10, so 16 onwards, and then when we get into the 20s, we have lots of nulls from the object table, the first query, because this one only goes up to 19. Next, we have the full join. So this gives me everything from the first query. So we have three to nine, everything where they match. So we've got 16 to 19 and everything from the second query, which doesn't match, but we don't have any overlap. So we don't have the entirety of the first table and then the entirety of the second table. We only have numbers 16 to 19, just the ones. And then finally, there is cross join. So cross join does not require this on because there is no comparison that you are using. So I'm just going to comment it out. So if I run this, look at the dissimilarities between the two object ID columns. So number three is being compared against 16 to 29. And then scroll further down and we'll see number five is being compared against each of those and then six and then seven and so on. So this is not used often and you can see how many more rows this is being producing 1460 compared to even with the full join we only had 152 rows so you really see a huge number of rows for the cross join not often used avoid it unless you've got the particular need so we have got these five different joins we have got join or inner join which gives you everything where the two inputs match. We've got left join, which gives you the entirety of the first input and where the second input matches. We have right join, which gives you everything from the second input and where the first input matches. So of course, left join and right join, if you reverse the order of the two inputs, they would be the direct opposite. So A, left join B is the same as B, right join A. It just depends on which one goes first. Full join, so that gives the entirety of it. And cross join, that's the one to avoid unless you really know what you are doing. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.